This is Ghana Tonight. Coming up next, Parliament adjourned indefinitely again, putting government business in Parliament in jeopardy if the impasse between the two sides of the House is not resolved. Amicably, where do we go from here? That's the question on the minds of many. And in fact, you're not alone on this. And that's uh, the fundamental aspect of the conversation, the focus of our conversation tonight. It's uncertain when again Parliament will sit following the adjournment of the House indefinitely by the Speaker of Parliament, Right Honorable Aban Sumana for Bagwin. Even though the life of this Parliament is nearing an end, there are still some critical government businesses, which I'm going to run through shortly for you to see, on the table. But a standoff between the NPP and the NDC caucuses in the House of Parliament over the declaration of some forces vacant and who is majority and who is minority, that's really actually brought the proceedings to a standstill. Here's the Speaker of Parliament explaining why it has become necessary for him again to adjourn the House Senate earlier today. In a swift session on Thursday morning, Parliament reconvened, but only members of Parliament from the NDC were seen in the majority section, with new patriotic party MPs noticeably absent. This imbalance set the turn for what would become a very short gathering. Speaker Alban Bagwin, for the second time in three weeks, adjourned proceedings indefinitely, attributing the suspension to the Business Committee's failure to convene and outline an agenda. This recall session initiated by the MPP Group in Parliament and intended to tackle urgent legislative matters was effectively stalled without the MPP's presence. The signatories who made the request have not shown up and in fact there is no other paper for today because the business committee could not meet. It is not advisable to be adjourning from day to day. And so I'll proceed once more to adjourn the meeting indefinitely. Reactions from both sides of the aisle soon followed. Dr. Kaysler. Well, that's the speaker there. And in fact, this explanation that he gave is consistent with what happened uh, just a little over almost two weeks ago. The NDC caucus also had the, a clear position on the matter that to the extent that this recall today was triggered by the MPP MPs and they not attending to the business of the House today, even though they triggered the recall, um, in their view, is, is actually amounts to uh, the causing financial loss to the state. We're going to hear from Dr. Kessler to Forsen shortly. But right after that, Alexander Fenyomarken, who leads the MPP caucus in Parliament, also addressed the press. Now, a number of things came up from that particular address, almost 30 minutes. He was directly pointing fingers at the Speaker of Parliament, in his words, for leading the chaos in Parliament. Take a look. What Mr. Speaker did today amount to supervising chaos and bringing the image of democracy to disrepute. The NDC is on a warpath. They want confusion in this country. They want lawlessness in this country. And all these are being supervised by Mr. Speaker. We look forward to engaging Mr. Speaker in the next few hours and days. We, we, we pray that he does the needful. If he doesn't do the needful, we will continue to rely on the law to get the right things done. Well, there are those who have also held a different opinion about that uh, this Alexander Fenyomarkin espousing there um, and also raising questions about the speaker's conduct. Well, Dr. Kesla Tofosing, uh, before this press conference by uh, that's Alexander Fenyomarkin, also did indicate that the MPP. MPs should be held for causing financial loss to the state because every time parliament is recalled, there's a cost to it. And, and you and I are the ones paying for it. Take a look. Yeah, it's an abuse of the constitution and the standing orders of Ghana's parliament. The NPP minority caucus have indeed caused financial loss to the state. He has Ghanaians to remember the incident as they cast their votes on December 7th. We the MPP and punish them accordingly. Everything shows that the MPP are tired, they are fed up to do the and uh, they are not ready to work for the people. On the other side. 
Well, there was a lot that happened after the speaker adjourned Sinadia earlier today. Uh, the likes of Kwabena Tahir Hamon, the trade minister, uh, the Sokwa member of parliament, engaged the press. And, and some unsavory words, for the lack of better expression, was used um, in, in that interview with the press and, and a number of reactions to that as well. I just want to quickly, let's hear from Katie Hamon, two things that he was involved in earlier today. That interview with the journalists and the journalist posing specific questions to him because he is a lawyer as well about the conduct of the MPP MPs. Take a look. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Katie Hamon there. One of a number of things that he was involved in today. And, and what you just saw is his interaction with some NDC MPs who were leaving the Accra International Conference Center after the speaker, Ajahn Sinedia. He literally went after them and verbally attacked them. That's what you saw there. He had to actually be restrained by uh, James Klucha Veggie and some NDC MPs because he came at them with that level of fury that you're seeing there. And he raising questions as to why, uh, in his view, they decided to go sit at the majority side of the House and making reference to the Supreme Court decisions and so on. That's Katie Hammond there. Now, quite apart from this, I wanted to just take a look at this. Aside everything that's going on, the reason why Parliament was recalled today for the urgent business, as according to the MPP MPs, to be undertaking, this is it. There are two of President Kofuado's Supreme Court nominees who are yet to be approved by Parliament. That is still on hold because of what's happening in Parliament. There are some tax waivers as well that have not yet been approved. There are some IDA facilities with reference to the $250 million financial stability fund, which is critical for the financial sector in this country, especially the banks that were heavily impacted by the domestic debt exchange program. Government promised that they will benefit from this particular fund, right? That's not in place as yet. Now, architect's registration bill is on the ice. The vaccines development and manufacturing bill, the merger of ECG and NETCO, that bill 2024 is still on the ice because of this. And then you also have the University of Local Governance and Development Bill 2024. And then this one, the Nuclear Power Ghana Authority Bill, the Major of Energy Commission and PRC Bill 2024, all of that still on the ice. The Major of the VRA, very controversial one, VRA, Power Authority 2024, is on the ice. As, at least based on this particular information we have from the Minister of State at the Ministry of Energy, uh, that's Herbert Crapper, this one, this bill, the Major of the Voter Authority and Power Authority Bill, um, it says further discussions on that bill should cease for further consultations to take place between the Energy Ministry government and also the Bui Power Authority and the VRA staff. Because you know, the VRA senior staff have been heavily against this. They've held a number of press conferences which we have brought some details to you on. So all this plus more 
are the urgent businesses that the MPP sought to have this parliament recalled. But they didn't attend to the business of the House. They gave reasons why they didn't do so. But Kennedy Japon, the since central member of parliament, had some words of departure, and some have described it as words of wisdom after the decision by Alexander Peño Markin. But take a look. To get understanding from the speaker. So we are at the caucus meeting, and maybe I will admit that it took so long. But that is even allowed in parliamentary culture. I engage honorable Abuja <clears throat> and told the minister, oh, then you made a mistake. You should have informed the speaker that you were at the caucus meeting. The speaker didn't do, which I cannot defend because I'm not part of the leadership. And I'm sure he, he's right. I'm sure if my leaders have informed the speaker that we're holding a meeting and we'll be back, definitely he would have waited. So. It was the owners who also saw on the so called majority. Yes. Where are your police? And he will tell them they are in caucus. They want to tell us that nobody knew that we were having a caucus meeting. Well, he can be a Pimenides and sit on the fence because even if he knows, and once there's no official communication, I can pretend I didn't know. That one day, I can pretend no, that I didn't know. People sitting on our seats. Yeah, that's the, that's the problem. I've, I've posed that question because I entered the chamber and I saw. Seat, so I saw NDC occupying <laughs> MPP seats. So I just had to leave. I told the leader and the leadership, the two whips and deputy majority leader that we should go back. In the interest of our country, Ghana, I believe in Ghana. With what is going on in parliament, it's not good for the country. I have advised my colleagues from the old the other side, that look, assuming you win the incoming election, would you get to test of parliament to take decisions?